So we're no longer going to be doing averages of listed data. We're now going to be doing it of frequency tables instead. So they're not in a list. They're actually in a table here. And this one is talking about the number of children in a family and the frequency. So there are four families that have got no children, three families with one children, et cetera, et cetera. So a frequency table allows us to avoid writing out repeated values. What this actually means is we've got four zeros, we've got three ones, we've got nine twos, and we've got two threes. So it's kind of boring to have to write out all of those values. So recall that each value x must be multiplied by the frequency in order to show that each value is repeated appropriately when adding up all the values. So you'll probably remember this from GCSE that if you were gonna do this, you would multiply all of these together so that you get zero, three, 18, and six to find out how many children there are in total. What's that going to be 27? And then you would divide it by how many people there are, or how many families there are in total. So what's that? Four and three is seven, and nine is 16, and two is 18. So as long as I've done that right, let's check that. 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, 18 families. So in this case, I have written it in this notation. I've said that it's the sum of f x. This means the sum of the frequencies multiplied by the x values. This is my fx column that I've got here. And so the sum of those is 27. This bit previously was how many things there were. It was n. But it's changed. And it's now just saying add up the frequencies. In other words, how many families there are. And it adds up to 18. So it's just going to be 27 over 18. And 27 over 18 is just 1.5. So this is saying that the mean number of children in a family is 1.5 children. So there's a bit of an exam tip here, because in an exam, you will get a method mark for the division and an accuracy mark for the final answer. So all you really need to do is this bit here and then for the final answer. So you don't need to show that you did the zero times four, the one times three. You can actually just go straight to this bit here and you can grab all of this information that you need from your calculator. So we need to figure out how we can actually do this on the calculators. There is a couple of things we need to do. We're gonna to need to add a frequency column for our data input, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So we're gonna do it for this one that we've got here. I've got this um, elsewhere. Keep this in front of you so that you can see what it is that I'm doing. So let's just go back to the camera. I'm gonna start off with the graphics calculator to begin with. So here is the graphics calculator. Let's just focus it on there. And now I'm gonna tell you about how you can add in a frequency column. I better just delete all of this data to start off with because that was from the coins in the previous video. And this time what you can do is you go back to calculate and it's one variable calculation. But before you do that, I want you to press the set button. Now what you can do is you can change it so that the frequency doesn't have to be one for every single one of them. Instead, you can change it to a list. So I'm gonna change it from list one, and I'm going to change it to list two instead. So that now the variables are written in list one, and the frequencies are going to be written in list two. So for the data that we have there for the different families, the number of children, there's zero, one, two, or three. And then I'm just gonna use this to scroll up to the top and say that the frequencies are four, three, nine, and two. Now I've done that, I've effectively got the frequency table that we've just seen written into the calculator. So you're going to press one variable for the calculation and you'll see all of these different things that we've got here. Now remember the bits that I said you need to write to get the method mark. You can't just say the 1.5, you should say the sum of x, which is actually the sum of fx, but the calculator is just saying it's the sum of all the values. So it's 27 over 18 and so the average is 1.5. Now, they won't say sum of fx. You need to know that it's just the sum of x because effectively that's what you're doing. You're adding up all of the, the number of children in the different families. OK, so that's it with this calculator. I'm now going to show you with this calculator what needs to be done with the class quiz. So you're going to go to menu and you're going to go to statistics, which is number six. And you're going to be doing one variable cal um, calculation. So I'm going to press number one. And you'll notice that there is no frequency. So you're going to press shift and then menu to get the setup. So shift, 
setup. You're going to scroll down. When it says statistics, you can then press number three and it says frequency on or off. You should just make sure it's always on because you can always put one in for the frequencies if you want to. So the number of um, things we're going to put for X, these are the kids in the family. So we're going to do zero equals one equals two equals and three equals. Notice how they automatically put a frequency of one in. So that's why I would just always leave the frequencies on. The frequencies are four, press equals, three, nine, and two. Press AC to clear all of this. And remember what you do, you press options. It's a one variable calcula um, calculating. So I'm gonna press number two and you get all of the different things that you've got here. They're a little bit small to see, but you can see that the average is 1.5, the sum of them is 27. You have to scroll to the next page to get that there are 18 of them. So that's where that 27 divided eight by 18 actually comes from. Okay, so let's go back to good notes. So what I would recommend here is we won't really remember it as the sum of f of x. We're going to think of it as the sum of x. And instead of the sum of f, we're going to think of it as over n. So from your calculator, you can grab that value of the 27 and the 18. And you can check that you get the right answer of 1.5. So we're just going to do one last bit now of thinking about it with grouped data. Now, you can't type grouped data into your calculator. I have got an example here about some bears, the height of h of these bears in meters is written in these ways. We've got between 0 and 0 0.5, there were four bears, tiny little teddy small bears. 20 of them were between 0 0.5 and 1.2 meters, 5 blah blah blah, 11 blah blah blah. So we don't know the exact values anymore. All we know is that there were 20 bears that were between 0 0.5 meters and 1.2 meters. So what do we assume that each value is? We assume that each value is the midpoint of each interval. We use the variable x to indicate the midpoint, and we can then calculate the mean in exactly the same way as before. So the estimate of the mean, and it's an estimate which I will explain in just a second, is you will then do the sum of f of x over the sum of f. But remember how you'll see that on the calculator, it's just going to be the sum of x over n. I'm going to do this one just using the class whiz calculator, but I think what I should do beforehand is find out what the midpoints are going to be. So the midpoints between 0 and 0 0.5 are going to be 0 0.25. If you want to find a midpoint, you know that you can add the two values and divide it by 2. So I'm going to do 1.2 plus 0 0.5 and divide it by 2. So it's 0 0.85. Between 1.2 and 1.5, I'm going to add them together and divide it by 2. So it's 1.35. And then I've got 1.5 and 2.5. Well, that's going to be two, isn't it? One, two, three. Yep, it's going to be two. So I'm going to try and type this into my, I'm going to go with the class words for this one. I'm not going to do it with all of them all the time. So let's just quickly put this into the class words calculator. Okay. So to go to the class words, press AC, press uh, options and then number three to take it back to the data. And this time we're gonna do the, the midpoint. So it's a 0 0.25, a 0 0.85, a 1.35 and a two. And if you ever need to delete any of them, I think you can just press delete and it will completely go like that. So I'm just gonna put the two back in there. Let's change the frequencies. So the frequencies are four, 20, five and 11. And then I'm gonna press AC so that, that data is then stored. I'm going to go options, I'm going to do one variable calculation, and you'll see all of the different things that I've got here. So I know that the answer is 1.16875, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to write down. I'm going to do the sum of x, which is 46.75, divided by 40. That's what I'm going to write, just to make sure I get those method marks. So I'm just going to come back to good notes. So from the calculator, the sum of x is... Just going to scroll back up, 46.75, and the number of values was 40. I can check that that's going to work, 46.75 divided by 40, 1.16875. And you'll remember that's actually the value that you saw for x bar. So I'm going to write this to, I don't know, I'm going to write it to two decimal places. So 1.17 meters to two decimal places. So there's one last bit here. I've said, why is our mean just an estimate? Because we don't know the exact heights within each 
group. Grouping data loses information. Please highlight this bit here. This is, this is the kind of thing they love to ask about in the exam. One last thing before you do some practice for me is I've said that the class quizzes will calculate the lower and upper quartiles along with the median. I'm just going to quickly show you what I mean when we go to this bit here. So if I just quickly come back, you'll see that they've actually, if you scroll down, they calculate the Q1, which is a quartile, they calculate the median and things like that. However, there's a warning about this. Oops, not this. There's a warning about this because it is not applicable to grouped data. When you input your midpoints in the data input, your calculator doesn't know that these are midpoints. It just assumes, for example, that the first four beds, four, first four beds did have a height of 0.25. So you can't use the calculator to do the quartiles or the median for grouped data. And we'll be finding out later on how you actually do that. So please don't get tricked in to thinking that you can use the calculator for this. Okay, so let's practice you using your calculators, whether you've got the graphics or the class quiz. I've got some tables here. This one, obviously, you're going to put straight in with a frequency table. I really want you to show the division stage in your working as well. This one, you're not going to find the mean, you're going to find an estimate of the mean because we've got some things grouped here. And this one has also been grouped as well. So you can do these on your own. I'm going to put the answers up in just a second. So you can pause the video and try and type them in now. And then you can try some questions from exercise 2a and 2b. These are the answers for these ones you've got here. And you'll notice how I've done this extra stage of doing the sum of c divided by n or the sum of fq divided by f, etc, etc. Um, so yeah, hopefully you got these right with using your calculator and then have a go at exercise 2a and 2b.